Why, hello, it is Robbie from Southern California. It is the middle of July, and I'm doing this this time in the evening as the sun is going down. We've been warm, but not too hot lately. So I thought it would be more fun to do it in the evening because what I'm trying to do is get a lot of projects done. Well, though there's a lot new in the garden, I thought I would do it in the evening and kind of walk you through quickly just to see what's going on because I've got so many more exciting videos I really want to do like on the irrigation tubing. This is my new favorite thing. And that's something I want to do soon, my favorite things. Here is the chair garden. Almost everything is planted up. And what I'm doing here is removing things. I'm literally removing the squash that came up in my compost to see if I could save that little watermelon right in the middle. But if not, I might leave some of the squash. Those are squash that have been bred here. In other words, something I grew, something we ate, the seeds got composted and they're growing. And you know, a lot of that is the best squash. They don't care what the weather is. They don't get mildew. Look at this, they don't get mildew. They were born and raised here. Here's another one where you get zucchini and you have mildew issues because we're so damp still in the morning. And then even now we're cool. We're like 70 degrees. We were even in the 60s this morning. So let's see what's going on here. I've got watermelon growing in here, just starting the plants. I've got those seeds going. I've got tomatoes I planted and carrots. I've been eating carrots out of here. And yes, we do have carrots. These are the ones I transplanted. And a little bit of Swiss chard. Those are the squash that were all grown here. You know, like I said, originally the seeds came from here. That tomato plant kind of conked out on me back there. So I'm going to be pulling that out. But the beans are massive. We've got beans all over this. I think Gary pulled some beans down. I'll have to see on the other side, but they were there the other day. There were big beans. He goes, you got big beans on here too. This, I'm going to get the celery out. I don't want any more celery growing in with anything anymore. But I'll probably leave the garlic chives and then maybe I'll stick something else in there later. The tomatoes, I'm going to leave. I, I just can't complain on this. It keeps growing and growing. There is a watermelon plant I planted early on. It's in there. It doesn't look good to me. It's growing, and there was a little watermelon somewhere, but the thing is, I can do better by starting new and having a healthier plant. And this I have not gotten to. This is a yellow squash, and I have picked some yellow squash. But see, when I see insects coming, that tells me that the plant is not happy. Healthy plants usually don't get that many insects. So I'm probably gonna end up taking this out and putting something else in there, but I have already gotten squash out of that. So all in all, everything is doing really, to me, quite good. Truck bed, oy, the truck bed is so full of squash. I'm actually to the point I don't wanna see any squash. I've given to my neighbors, nobody wants any more squash. I've got the shark fin melon all through here. I've got other squash, there's a zucchini growing back there. I've got, I mean, I've been picking, but it's just like, there's actually, this is why I'm not anxious to grow anymore. I've got a butternut back there. Uh, that would be fun. And then, of course, this one doesn't look like it made it. But let me tell you something. You can still eat this. You can slice it up and fry it on a frying pan, a little butter or whatever. But see how the stem is brown? That one didn't make it. That one's doing really, really good. And then, of course, it's still throwing new squash. So, and then, like I said, there is a zucchini back there I have to get off. Maybe I can get you in there because I can't get in there. You see a zucchini down there? Yep. I haven't gotten to the ponds yet. I have so many plants. And that's another thing I want to do. Kind of sit down with you guys and put together a solar fountain kit that's going to go in there. I got a new unit and do that. Let's keep walking. This is my meadow. Isn't that cute? I'm really happy with the meadow. I've got tomatillos that are starting in here. This is a big tomatillo bush. I've got I'm not sure what this is. I don't think it's a shark fin melon. It might be the squash I was telling you about that was born and raised here. I've got black bamboo back there. I've got walking onions. There's nasturtiums in there. There's just common weeds in there. I've got a tomato plant that's grown. Uh-oh. I suspect a hornworm. If it's not a hornworm, then what ate? This was all fine yesterday. Something ate all the tops off. Okay, this is bitten. See, it's bitten. Okay, that's not a hornworm. All the tops are bitten off. This, see the top was bitten off and the leaf isn't shredded. 
there would be leaves that would be shredded that might be deer so the deer are testing it the deer are having an issue you know I can keep walking they had they were here the other day Gary saw them and there's not as much food they do come and eat some of the leaves off the trees but they're also looking and testing other things they tested the beans one day we came over here and you could see that they were kind of munching on those where are the beans? oh see I'm gonna let some of them go to see there's one there's another one they're all through here you have to start looking for them I want them to go to seed but they stripped it is what they did they were lower down and they strip all the leaves off but it's probably something they're not thrilled about so they haven't eaten that much there's some more beans all through here there's beans here there's beans there there's beans there there's been beans all over all back there the deer don't like the beans so I'm not going to worry that much about it but they've tested the tomato and they're testing it there because it's probably some place that tomato wouldn't really grow so they munch down and they take a bite off the top is what they're doing here I groomed it the other day and went through and took all the leaves off that we didn't need or I see I missed one there and now they're all making a comeback see soon as you take off the leaves you don't need like I can remove this I can remove this one back here then it just goes into a burst and it starts throwing more fruit more flowers when you leave too many leaves on there that they don't need then they're struggling to oops take care of the squash that we don't bring in that's kind of sunburn but see I took off all the brown leaves the other day and even though I left that squash still on and it is still attached I don't do big harvests and you know that oh my gosh there's three in here oh boy but once you take them all off then it goes through a burst see even here more flowers are starting because I went through and took a lot of the leaves off that plant is second year and every time I go to pull it out it's just wound all over the bottom it suddenly starts making a comeback so I'm gonna leave it right now no hurry see more flowers because I went through and took all the leaves off some of them I actually yanked out I mean the whole plant like here I went through and I yanked out a bunch and I'm probably gonna clear that out that one's making a comeback this one never threw any fruit but it looks really good now that I groomed it and here I just stuck in a no I didn't I was going to another squash oh I stuck this one in it looks bad but it still might come up new from the bottom see all new growth and I'll see what happens with that that is squash that was produced here the ones that I'm pulling out of the chair garden I'm just kind of putting them around so oh no I think everything's doing really good oh, let's put it this way and whatever we don't eat and we can't give away it returns to the soil and becomes soil for our plants and that's what they need tomatoes they're all doing good that's a volunteer that is sun gold there's my peppers down there remember I threw this tool up here months ago I never got back to fixing it and it's worked fantastic I just literally threw it up there but it protected the tomatoes I've got eggplant with a little tiny eggplant on there can you see the eggplant the plant doesn't look that great but it's producing eggplant maybe it's not getting enough sun maybe the nights are still too cold I don't know I've got a watermelon in there I've got this thing this Russian red kale they called it look how beautiful this will be good for the winter that thing will just take off and then once the boxes break apart this is the box garden it will just set root inside here and just keep growing but look at all the tomatoes so this is, those are the 100s and then more beans these I really should not have left it that is last year's tomato plant this one's new but this is in a flower pot so it's it's good I mean it was a small little plant and it's taking off but the other one I really should yank it and every time I go to yank it I see all these tomatoes and think okay so it's not as bushy as last year yeah we'll see no hurry because that's one thing I've got are plants growing and food producing tons of walking onions and I want to make a walking onion farm in the front yard I've decided I'm going to do that more watermelon growing there watermelon growing up there those are the early plants and I think the new plants the new seeds I'm growing now are going to do better oh and this is the new cucumbers some of them fizzled out and I planted some new ones look so I've got new cucumbers starting that's a brand new plant have not done anything here I keep looking at this and deciding if I'm going to go as corn or if I'm I don't want to plant any more squash is what it is so I'm not sure but I'm going to get to it soon 
this tomato plant's doing really good. It needs a good grooming. This one came up last year, but it is doing really, really well. And you'll see, I haven't done a lot. To, okay, now these are watermelons. There's two plants in here, and now they're starting to really take off. I'm gonna cater to that. And then I've got a squash in there that I may pull out. This is doing good. And then these were just planted. So I've got some more squash through there. These are actually zucchini on the bottom. I had planted some seeds and stuck them in there. See the powdery mildew? See how some plants are affected so much and right next to it, no powdery mildew at all. So you kind of want to think about that. If we're in an area that the plants aren't happy with because it's so damp in the morning and then cool at night, maybe I won't want to take seeds from there. And maybe I'd want to get rid of that plant and plant some more plants that are coming up in my yard because that one is doing fine. And that one's covered in powder and mildew. Yet, I have gotten squash off of it. I've got squash off of it. Yeah, look. I haven't even pulled the squash off. It is still attached. So, the powdery mildew does not affect the plants here. They continue to produce. They continue to do good. It's just kind of like, doesn't look that good. All right, let's keep walking. I pulled... Eggplant this afternoon off of that. We already cooked it. I sliced it. I put salt all over it for about an hour. It pulls all whatever I'm allergic to. I don't like it. it kind of bothers me. It pulls it out and then I washed it real good, dried it and fried it. It was fantastic. There's a couple yellow ones I forgot to get to. So I need to pull those off and compost them. Nothing here. Here's, this is the only grow bag. Peppers. No, I have one more. That's right, with strawberries in. This is doing really good. There were two pepper plants in there. One did not like to grow back, and that one did. So I took the other one out, put that on my deck, and I'll see what happens. And right now, that one's doing really good. These are the black cobra chilies. This is what now, going on the third year? Fantastic, because last we had it for two years. So it's going well past its two-year mark. Celery in their own bucket. Malabar spinach making a comeback from last year. I did not plant it. It's here. Let it do its thing. Okay, I've got lots of walking onions. Like I said, I haven't done anything. A volunteer tomato came up. I've got some green Swiss chard growing that the rabbits keep eating. Got to get all this out. So let's keep walking. I threw that there because I didn't know where to put it. And let me tell you something. The green sorrel loves it. The lid, I just threw it there. I didn't know where to put it. So nothing new here. Now this one's got some... See a lot? No, actually, that's the color of the leaf. That may not be. No, it is. It's got a little bit of powdery mildew, but it's still, they still keep producing. So producing with a little bit of powdery mildew doesn't hurt anything. More green sorrow. Like I said, I have not done anything here. Here, I haven't worked. And that's okay. I'm just, what I did was I collected all the weeds off of everything. Let me step back. So there's no weeds, and I've been composting the weeds into totes that I'm setting up, and I'm going to slowly go through here. The good thing about the wall garden here is this is going to get tons of sun all fall and into winter, because right now the sun goes this way. Now we're into summer, and the sun is coming back. So by September, the sun will be there, and this will be all lit up. So I can even plant later on and not have to worry about this, get everything else done that I want to get done. And that's what I'm doing. This is my carrots, and I don't have to do anything with it. I just let them grow, let them fall, and pull them out when I want a carrot. Yeah, Isn't that cool? And then I pull the babies out and I transplant them. I even ate a carrot out of that yesterday too. Parsley, just nothing done yet. I haven't gotten here yet either. That's what I'm saying. I'm looking at all the projects and things I want to do, I don't need to knock myself out with this until later because I may be able to have a winter garden. We can grow pretty much until around December. And then if we get really cold, that's when the brassicas will take over. And I can plant a lot of brassicas in here. I don't want to overdo on zucchini because we're starting to get sick of it. Okay, let's go in the front yard. I am just starting in the front yard and I kind of got a plan. Okay. I brought out some of my potting soil because what I did was I left everything the way it was, added in some more kitchen scraps and leaves from the garden, and then only where I planted the squash plant, this has been pulled out of my chair garden, that's where I put a handful of potting mix in. 
just around the base, but the rest of it is left over from other totes and mixed in. So here I'm going to plant, and this will look better. You'll see when you come back, it should look better. I should actually take all this off because these won't make a comeback. Once they look like this, they're done. And let all the new leaves get the growth. I can just leave that here. So this is just sitting here to kind of make sure it keeps moisture in there. Okay, now the new leaves will grow and then it will turn into a big plant. It's gonna be like a hybrid zucchini and that's fine with me. And then I'll get to the rest of these. And here is what I was thinking because of the trees. Look how big they are. Can you see how big they've gotten? I mean, they have gotten really big and I love the trees. I don't wanna take them down. So what I think I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use that as a display table or I can move pots on top. That's where I did that video with the turmeric. That table worked out really, really well. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of here. I'm gonna plant blueberries in two of those. And then the rest of them, I think I'm gonna do walking onions. And maybe I'll groom some of these. Oh, that's a dinosaur kale, groom it down. Look, it's like, it's like a tree, isn't that something? Kind of groom it up a little bit and get other things in here. I'm not gonna put squash this year. I don't need it. I'm gonna get the geranium out, probably put it in the bird garden, trim it down, clean this all up. I haven't even taken care of that. And the finger lime have been taking off. This is so good to eat. This tree is doing fantastic. I would like to get more finger limes. And that's basically it. So I've just started coming in here, which is good. And then I was using that wonderful stretch hose yesterday. Gary heard me scream, came running, and it blew up. I saw it. I heard pop. And what happened was the fabric on the hose. Yes, you can't fix it with aluminum foil. No, I didn't try to fix it with aluminum foil. It was right there. All of a sudden the material popped and a big bubble and it got bigger and bigger. It got the size of a bowling ball. I was running to try to shut it off. I didn't even have it that high and it blew up. Nobody got hurt. I got soaked with water. No, I did not think you could fix this hose with aluminum foil. But what I was trying to do is it was shooting out because it already had its issues and it was shooting out on me as I was going around watering and I tried to make it where it goes down the hose and not all over me, but the hose is gone now. This is where I think walking onions would do really, really well. I think it'd be fantastic here. I mean, look how good they grow here. They're really happy in pots, so why not get as many as I can through here in a place that they're happy, and it will be nice to sit out here with the walking onions growing, maybe get some more flowers and different things here because the hummingbirds, they hang around here during the day, and they're feeding on the flowers. As long as I water the succulents really good, these came at the house years ago, they'll start to blossom like this and they throw flower spikes. If you don't water them and they dry, then they don't throw them. So I've been watering them really good and they keep throwing the flowers and the hummingbirds love them. Let's keep walking. So I think, you know, putting flowers around for the hummingbirds, making a nice place that maybe I can come out here and maybe do a project out here. I can only work out here until around noon. Then the sun comes, it goes past the trees. And for the summer, it's gonna be really hot. But see, like now, early, early evening, I could do something now if I wanted to, even if it's to come out and say, hey, and maybe do the Q&A. So we'll see. We can do something like that. We can answer questions, or you can ask questions, or I can ask you questions. Turmeric, the ginger is doing fantastic. They're all coming up now. This one did not come up. But believe you me, I have so much left, I'm gonna replace that one. This one is coming up, it just started. And then pink is turmeric. That color there is ginger. Of course, once they come up, you can see turmeric has a big wide leaf and ginger has the narrow leaf. I know it looks variegated, but it's not. See how big they're getting? They're getting big and I gotta get compost tea in here for them, that would be really good. This is the black turmeric, see it has a black stripe. These do not. And these do. I threw some zinnias in there and look at that. I've got yellow and pink zinnias in with my stevia, which is really good. Stevia needs a lot of water. So if you've got stevia, don't let it dry out because I have to water that every day, but I don't have to water the ginger or turmeric every day. All in all, it's doing good. All I have to do is the rest of mine. Gary said he's gonna take some, he took some already. I have like 50 more pieces. 
I've got a new place in the backyard. I think I'm going to plant some and we're going to have a whole bunch and next time we're going to have to eat them and freeze more. You saw the video. All my turmeric will always be in buckets. And then I'll plant something in here. I think I'm going to make a two system compost in here. So if I'm composting in here, all the water coming out, I can water this and I don't have to have standing water. All I have to do is take the water that will, you will see. We'll, I'll do it with you. But I'm going to do that. Let's go in the bird garden. So now we are in the bird garden. I haven't done a whole lot as far as planting vegetable plants. I've got some of those squash coming up that were from my yard. It's going to look like a zucchini, a hybrid. I've got walking onions there, walking onions there. Let's swing around here. I've got orange mint, more orange mint. I've got garlic chives, chocolate mint down there. I've got brassicas growing. I've got lemon verbena, more mint. Look, we have more brassicas up here in these upside down planters. I have not gotten to these totes. These are the totes that are what, six years old now? Eh, they'll probably go for another year or two, but I'm gonna have to do something because that is really pulling on that. Maybe I should take that plant out and move it and then it'll put less stress on the tote because it's a little big for that. So here is the bird garden. What I've been doing in here in my spare time is coming in here and working in the bird room over there in the bird garden. We'll get there in a minute. So what is going on here is everything is wild, but it's all food. It is all food. I've got tree collared everywhere and I'm going to have to, well, start tr thinking about taking this off. It's sitting on the chair and see how stressed and broke this is. I've got a new one growing back there. A piece must have dropped off and it took off. It is so easy to propagate and that's something a lot of you have asked me about. They want me to actually sit down and show you how I do it. So we'll do this real soon because this one plant could probably make 30, 40 plants on that one plant. I probably won't take that off, but I could, could do a good trimming, but I could do a ton of trimming on that. Looky, looky. Last night, Gary came out here. You know what that is. And he hand pollinated two dragon fruit flowers back there. He's got a ladder back there. I don't know if you can just see the ladder. He had to climb up on the ladder on the other side of the wall and he hand pollinated them in the dark. And then in his garden, way down there, I don't know if you can see it down there, he's, oh, he's actually down there working. He went ahead and had a hand pollinate down there. And obviously tonight, these are gonna open. He didn't tell me about those. So he'll be hand pollinating this. I was gonna trim this back. I mean, it wasn't supposed to get into my garden and that's the issue. Let me pull this back so you can see it. I was going to get in here and I was going to start trimming things in here and getting more plants in there but it would be really silly this time of the year to trim back the dragon fruit when it's going to start producing all summer we're going to have a ton of dragon fruit and nobody here gets tired of dragon fruit maybe a little tired of zucchini which i'm going to freeze a lot this year but dragon fruit my granddaughter can eat just as much as she can get a hold of so i'm not worried about it so i'm going to let this go but i can add in things It'd be real simple in totes like this, pull off all the yellow leaves, fill it up in a bucket and then drop a bucket in there and just grow whatever I want to grow. So I'll get into this when I get to this. But right now, everything you see is food. As you look around, it's all food. It's all different types of collard and kale and some of them are hybrids. There's a hybrid, look how beautiful this is. Is that gorgeous? I had a green drink today. I went through and foraged only in my bird garden, pulled a bunch of leaves and made a fabulous green drink. I can't complain on this because as much as you see it and think, well, where's all the food growing in here? This is all food. You want some tea? You've got lemon verbena. You want to make a green drink? You can throw that in there. You can just forage through and walk through. I've got tomato plants coming up on their own. These are volunteers and they're throwing tomatoes. Isn't that cool? Now the flowers I'm starting to put in, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to come into this. This is what I call the bird room. Let me step back a little bit. Because this is where the birds feed and this is where I'm gonna put a lot of solar fountains in here. Because I want a place that's safe and protected for them. And normally you can just throw seeds anywhere. We do have a lot of hawks around here. And if you do this crisscross thing, see up there, we've talked about this. They can't dive bomb hawks don't walk up and pick up their food. They need to swoop in. And if they can't swoop and get a good swoop in and out, and they tend to go like this and up, 
then they don't bother. I have not seen a hawk come in here since I did the zigzag with all this Brazilian pepper tree branches. I put it all in there. A lot of it is just zip tie, tied with yarn. And as soon as I decide this is exactly the way I want it, I will wire it all up. I've got some thin wire I bought at the thrift store. I bought like a big roll and then Gary looked it up. And he goes, you paid like five bucks for this roll? I go, yeah, about two of them. He said, you know, they're like $50 a roll. So that was a good find, that was recently. So what I'm doing in here is setting it up for the birds and I'm setting it up with flowers. I've got purslane growing, came off my deck when I moved the flowers here. And then I've got the polka dot plant. Remember that if you go into the garden department, you can pick up a whole tray of this for like $3, $4. But if you go into the inside where they have the house plants and you get a little tiny plant for $8 big difference so I've got different flowers spotted through here a lot of these are like this is an emu bush an emu plant and it throws yellow flowers this is another emu plant this one grows upright and it throws the beautiful pink flowers so there's different types of flowers they're not edible I don't think and I'm not eating them then I've got different flowers I've spotted through here this is the hummingbird lunch this is beautiful I have one more on the deck it's not doing that well because it needs to be transplanted I'm gonna bring it out here transplant it but this will be for my solar fountains this is just too fun I've got some papaya plants back there you cannot see them and I'm hoping they're going to just set root really really good and take off look at that so we'll see and if it doesn't I'll just try again rose bushes that's all done by cuttings that I did there's another rose bush Gary told me do not plant them they're full of thorns oh do not tell me that because I keep getting caught on it this is that pot we found in the trash has a big hole kind of covered up the hole and I've got pots in there growing things so I've got a brassica I've got roses different things zinnias remember the zinnia plants I planted out here I don't have to plant zinnias anymore they come up everywhere on their own all that is zinnias coming up on their own they just pop up and just take off and grow this is just great I love this so I want to do more live projects too as far as water fountains because like this one that one's old I want to get rid of that or clean it up pull it out that's nothing I can put a little flat one there maybe I don't want to cover the candlestick one but I could bring the candlestick one up a little bit I'm trying to figure out how to do it there's a bucket one back there I did this is all mint growing on the ground spearmint I let that grow I let the birds kind of forage in there and hide through there more brassicas like I said this is all food but even though it looks like there's not really much growing no there's not tomatoes really or peppers just a couple plants here and there this is all brassicas and walking onions celery is growing more mint there's plenty of food this is all food then you've got here oh this is good I don't know if you remember my lemon balm looked like this and I thought oh maybe it doesn't like summer no it doesn't like celery. There's a celery plant I pulled out that was in with the lemon balm growing here. Now look at the lemon balm. It went from looking like that to looking like this. So now I started chopping out this celery. I'm gonna get this out. This one should start to look like this. Not happy with celery. And that's what I talked about. Keep the celery in their own containers and your plants will be happy. I have yet to ever dig up to see if there were sweet potatoes in here. Walking onions. Sage is growing here. I haven't put any pots there. I will soon. This is just baby walking onions that I put there. Isn't that cool? So I can find a place for it or leave it and just forage off of that when I need. Here I do want to clean up. I want to trim that back and I want to see what's growing in there and get buckets in there with food growing in the buckets, different vegetable plants, and leave it. Don't take anything out. I'm not going to give myself extra work. But sit containers in there and then plant in the containers. I did it over here. See, this is eggplant. I planted the eggplant in their own container, see? But I didn't change anything as far as digging anything out. No, I just planted them in containers and sat them in here. And I think they're just starting to throw. Well, see, the flowers are starting to throw eggplant. There's a little eggplant. So they're doing good. Here I still want to put a chair garden. Haven't done anything yet, but I will. But I am starting to plant more and more of the brassicas. I've been bringing over purple tree colors when they're sitting somewhere else and putting them here. 
They're in containers, but there's big holes or no bottoms on those containers. This way I know when I water them, it will go straight to the roots and then the plants will be happy, especially in the summer. And then that one, I think that's an old broccoli. I just stuck it in there. I don't know if it's gonna make it. If it doesn't make it, I'll compost it. Look at this, moringa growing in here. On the bottom, there's moringa. There's a moringa here. Isn't that cool? And then of course, there's some squash growing there. This is what the spice finches come in to eat. They love this, so I'm leaving that. Here's more. Just the bird seed that falls from this thing, it falls in the containers and nothing can get in these totes. So the spice finches have been so happy to have real seed, not from the grocery store, not from the feed store, but seeds that are growing wild in the garden. And that's basically it. Celery, I decided to just leave the celery. There is a little bit of garlic chives. I don't worry about that. And there's still one more onion left back there. Mint. And then this I really like. This is a beautiful, beautiful purple brassica. And I loved it. I want to do more cuttings. All right, let's go out. We've pretty much gone all the way around. Oh, oh, a tomato. I thought a strawberry. A tomato fell off. Oh, I'll put that in my pocket. Fell off of that. So I've got the grow bags going nowhere. The strawberry plant's doing okay, but see, I'm right by the hose. So every time I turn on the hose, I can water it. These things dry up so fast. Now here in Southern California, with us being so dry and warm, it, anything that was planted in here really struggled. So I'm gonna maybe put some peppers in there. My daughter said she does really, really well, well with peppers in grow bags, but she loves her totes too. You should check her video out. She's growing watermelon. She's ahead of us, but her temperature is a little warmer at night than us. And that little bit, changes things for some plants so she's doing fantastic i'll put a link to her newest video so you can go check out her garden the one that said she wouldn't grow in totes and i think she's got more than me now my gosh she's got a field of totes everything's doing okay i don't know if this will make it this may be on the end of its life so we'll see if any of these papayas come back especially that one these are starting to come back let's see what's up there I don't know, something, I don't know what that thing is. It's just, I don't know. I don't think it's anything. But what's weird is it moved. It must be a leaf. I'm not touching it. <laughs> I don't know, it's probably a leaf. It just doesn't look right. Anyways, I've got that papaya there. And then these are doing great. These are in a box. Remember that? This comes off. This is nothing. It's just sitting there so the rabbits wouldn't eat the bottom. And as soon as they take off, I can just lift that off. And then I've got this one. This one's doing good. That one I'm not sure because the bottom of the trunk doesn't look so well. We really had a really dry winter this year. And we're going through a severe drought. And you can see it in the plants. Even though I'm watering, they're not getting that deep watering that a lot of them need. Especially natural, you know, for for rain they're not getting rain so it's going to be tough on a lot of plants there's some broccoli that came back so we'll see as it goes okay so that's it so now we're in the rainbow garden i covered that i have to keep the rabbits out and i've got to get this covered that's right so this has to get covered with tool it's just a hood and i need to cover it because the rabbits absolutely love my potato mint so that's a no-no and that's my strawberry tower out of a bucket. This one's doing really good. I'm actually taking care of it. See how I covered it? So the rabbits won't get in there and eat it. They love potato mint. Something took a nibble on this the other day. I've got to get this off. And there's more, ouch, it's spiky. More zucchini there. So I got to get this off. This is potato mint. So I threw a piece in there, obviously. So it's growing in there. And then I've got squash growing through here. And I've got this cutting. This is a cutting off of one of the plants I bought, the tomatoes, the hundreds, and this cutting just took off. So I've got a squash and a tomato. I always tell you don't plant them together. I did. It's doing okay. This is why I'm going to change something up on the wall. I'm hoping to do it this week. I'm going to make that a two system, and then I'm going to have compost tea in here every day so I can water everything, including my fig tree. Look at this, it is full of figs. So hopefully we'll get figs and I can keep all these plants really, really happy. See how this one's unwinding and I've got to get that squash off. You get to the point and go, oh, another zucchini. 
this is doing really good this is see take the leaves just drop them back in another one of those purple kales i actually did the cutting on this so it's doing really good pepinos it's still growing pepinos in here this is watermelon i'm going to trellis this up in the new fashion in which i trellis i love this irrigation tubing this is it's amazing what you could you could do anything with this so you easily pop them apart you can take a little duct tape or you can put a zip tie and tie it there's different ways of doing it this is fantastic but i've got watermelon there I've got more water. No, I've got three in here and it wasn't supposed to have three. There were two seeds that were really young seedlings I put in here and then there was a seed that didn't look good. Obviously it was. So it came up. So I'm going to have to really compost heavily and then the flowers are going to be moved into the bird garden. This is a tomato plant. This one, I'm trying to think if it's a volunteer or another cutting because I've got a lot of cuttings from the 100s. This is where we had the caterpillar and we've got more milkweed i want to move the milkweed i think into the meadow down there that would be a much better place for it so that's it and then i've got tomatoes here but i want to get the milkweed out kind of bring bring it there i don't want to put the milkweed is what i was trying to say i don't want to put the milkweed in the bird garden i think it'd be better to get them away from the birds because something could nibble off and take the caterpillars and the monarchs fly all around here. So this way, if I put it down there in the meadow, put them in a pot or something, then the butterflies probably won't be really among the birds. There's very few birds there. And this is where we start a lot of our seeds. And then I don't have to harden them off because they're already hardened off. Look at that. I had even more in here the other day and Gary grabbed them, already planted them. Look at the size of that. That's it, and then my little celery. Oh, and the pizza garden. Let's walk over and see the pizza garden. I cannot complain on that. I didn't have to do anything. Look, I've got my sage, my regular green sage, tri-colored sage, really good for pizza. Anything you want to use it for, walking onions. I've got tomatoes growing all through here. I've got basil, I've got purple, and I've got green. I've got rosemary, which was a cutting that has taken off. It's in a pot. I've got my thyme growing here. It smells mm, incredible. And then I've got peppers all through here growing. Look at that. Now the peppers I trimmed back really good and they actually made a comeback this year. See the trellis? I love these. This is like so fantastic to use anywhere in the garden. So that's it. So we've done, we've done a 15 minute tour that probably took us what, over 30 minutes. I thought I was gonna walk out here and just do a zip around. So that's it. See, the sun has gone down. I'm hoping you can see this because now it is getting dark. I thought I would do it now because I want to get more done on the irrigation tubing I'm doing. I want to get that concentrated and done and I'll probably take you with me. This is something I've been wanting to set up since last year and this is something I got to set up now. This is my camera where I get to watch the coyotes come over and check out my stuff. And yes, they do check out my stuff. So I think that's it for right now. We have seen everything. Oh my goodness. I have yet to make zucchini bread though, which is actually a cake and I should do that soon. So I hope you enjoyed this. I have all these gardens that I take care of myself. It's crazy. And then I think of all these other things I want to start doing. It's like I was going to plan up a whole new garden here and I am going to, but maybe not right now. Maybe I'll wait. And like I said, I don't have to worry about the driveway because the driveway, I can plant that anytime because it will get more sun as we start to go into fall and into winter. And then I may end up growing zucchini all winter. It depends on how our winter is. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm getting back to work. Even now in the evening, I work. I love it in the evening. It's just so beautiful. And you still have the birds roaming around. And then... Of course, we see deer periodically up on the hillside. It's so fun. And then they come down and they eat my plants that are down there. Oh, well. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Are those beautiful? Free. Just a cutting off my other plant. Everybody's got to do cuttings.
wow, there's a dried up papaya. Oh, well, I thought it moved. 